back with Scott Silvis. He's joining us here today. They are new partners to the Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. You may have heard of them, Fifth Third Bank. We are so proud of Scott. His career trajectory in banking has been very impressive. He's been involved with the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce for some time. They are now working more closely with us at the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And our job is to help people understand the great work that they're doing. But also, Scott, part of our job is to promote and highlight individuals such as yourself. It's a very big deal for our community to have someone your age with your experience leading the efforts here in the Houston area. You had a, a, a long line of banking here in the city and now you're in this position where you're leading the team to take on this bank and take it to new heights. What does it feel like for you in terms of the responsibility? I mean, it, it, it's a great opportunity, but I would imagine it comes with a lot of responsibility and how have you uh, transitioned in your new role? Sure. Uh, well, thank you very much. Um, it, it very much a, a, a unique and, and tremendous opportunity. Um, it, it's a big undertaking, you know, the size of Texas um, to successfully um, build a bank's br a presence and brand in the state of Texas is an, an opportunity and a challenge as big as Texas, uh, but which is also makes it very exciting. Uh, there's a, a state with tremendous opportunity, um, diverse industries, lot, tremendous business climate. So I think that's a key ingredient for the bank to be successful. Um, exciting to um, be a part of something that's really building something from the ground up. Um, as we have successfully built a strong team, it's been exciting that other people are drawn to that same type of opportunity, uh, a large bank with a lot of capabilities, and you know, to be very active and successful in, in a very uh, wide open Texas market, and it's exciting to start that here in Houston. Well, but you're building on relationships that you've had you know, during your career, and certainly that's played a key role. Talk to people who are in business, who are even uh, young students, about relationships and how they really build and help you get to where you ultimately are sitting here today. Sure. Um, well, I, and I think that's interesting for younger generations to realize. We are no doubt in the middle of a yet again technological boom um, that's seemingly at a faster pace than uh, historical booms. Uh, however, I would say um, lots of different businesses and professions and by all means financial services still boils down to relationships, your ability to communicate, your ability to connect. Um, you know, studies show companies and entrepreneurs and owners do business with people that they trust, respect, and um, uh, you know, like. So you really can't do that behind technology and a computer that's really out in front and, and um, listening to what companies are, and owners are thinking about and challenges and objectives they have. And it's not a, a one solution, one size fits all. It's what tools do you have? How can you be helpful? Um, so it's exciting, and I think people, uh, and certainly younger generation, needs to realize that there's really no substitute for being in front of someone developing that relationship live, and that's an important part of how we um, are delivering in our market. Well, and certainly universities and schools will need to continue to focus on those soft skills which are becoming difficult, mm -hmm. where people are just communicating via text and emails or what have you. And so it's good to know that, in fact, there are many universities, even in engineering colleges, where they are uh, connecting those engineering students with business degrees and communication so that they can work well as teams. And so banking is absolutely a relationship type uh, endeavor. So let's go back. You went to the University of Texas. You were students. You were from the Houston area. Mm -hmm. And you, you knew all along you wanted to go into banking or you wanted to go into finance. What, what, did you, what were you thinking in high school as it relates to going to college? Um, I always preferred math, science, numbers, um, so um, applying into UT, it was business school or engineering. Um, actually got into engineering first, um, but after a year there, um, and, and when I did apply, my preference was business, um, but I got into engineering instead of business. But after the first year, I think I, you know, just continued to have more of a passion for numbers and financial sense and, you know, the, the markets and the economy and certain factors that drive businesses. And um, so soon then got into the business school at the University of Texas at Austin. Um, uh, potentially a typical college student, um, undecided on what it specifically I wanted to do, so I did like finance, was a little more general and broad, and I felt could apply to a lot of different types of um, roles and professions. Uh, so I chose to major in uh, finance and accounting. 
Um, then by the time of my senior year, I had narrowed down commercial banking, the relationship aspect of it, the ability to um, work with different companies at a level that you know, can certainly be pivotal in a life cycle of a company at that um, middle market segment. So narrowed down to um, middle market banking and have been doing that in Houston for about 16 years now. And that middle market is a very big sector of the yes. population in Houston, in Texas especially. So great opportunities for Fifth Third, as you said, to identify new uh, businesses and existing ones that you guys can go in and again provide solutions to. Uh, let's talk about something we'd like to ask all of our Houston legends as they are entering their career, they've got some set of ambitions and certainly as they are moving through the career that they want to stay true to. From our perspective, having you here today is certainly a tribute to your hard work and of the bank identifying you to put you in this leadership position. But I know you have a family, wife and children. Our question really is your legacy. How would you like to be remembered? Wow. Um, you know, I, I think it's um, one of those where, you know, the, the, the legacy is, is more of the impact that you have on people and, and their impressions of you versus what, you know, you may have uh, by yourself feel like you've, you've accomplished um, and, and in your own right, you know, have you view things. So to be remembered as someone who's certainly excited, you know, giving back to the community, being born and raised a native Houstonian, uh, enjoying this city um, from my childhood to appreciating it to a whole nother level here as a business professional in the Houston community. Um, you know, so someone who is in a role and enjoys um, working with, with people and helping business owners and entrepreneurs be successful. Uh, I think that's a, a direct relationship and a direct benefit, but indirectly, I think we're, you know, supporting the Houston economy and um, their success as, as entrepreneurs turns into economic success for the city. Um, it's been great to see what the city's accomplished in, in many years and many generations, and I'm excited to think about um, how much more prosperity there is on the horizon. So to have an impact and a small footprint in that, I think is exciting. Um, so it's, uh, there's a lot of work to do for us at Fifth Third Bank, but I'm, I'm excited that we've, we've just got a tremendous opportunity ahead of us, and being a part of that um, would certainly be an exciting part of the legacy for me. Very well. Well, on behalf of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, I want to congratulate you for being one of our Houston legends. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. On behalf of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, thank you for joining us. I'm Dr. Laura Murillo. Have a great day.